So let's walk through the eight steps that we should be using to help us solve these problems. So the first step says that it's a statement of the statistical hypotheses, all right? The null hypothesis always states that there's no difference. Here's what we really need to understand. Are we dealing with a non-directional research hypothesis? Are we looking for any difference? Or are we looking for a specific kind of difference, right? Are we looking, are we working with a directional research hypothesis? Why is this important? Because this is the first step we need to figure out in order to look up our critical value. What's step number two? Set the level of risk associated with the null hypothesis. Okay, in other words, what is alpha? Right, we're gonna use 5% until further notice. We can make it lower if we wanna make the test harder. Remember, you make your alpha smaller, you're making the test harder, right? If you require more evidence, that's when you make alpha smaller because you're making the test harder. Step three, select the appropriate test statistics. All right, how do I do that? Well, right now you can use the flow chart. But what you really wanna do is you wanna remember the key information for using the right test, right? So what's the right information that lets you know you should be doing an independent sample t-test? You're looking for a difference, you have two groups, and everybody's only being tested once, right? Everybody's only being tested once, Two groups, that's it. You're looking for a difference between these two groups, right? Step four, solve. Compute the test statistic, get the obtained value. In other words, write up the formula, make your tables, set up the problem, and then solve. Get the OV, get the answer to the statistical test, right? Step five, determine the value needed to reject the null hypothesis using the appropriate table of the, of critical values. What does that mean? Look up the CV. How do you look up the CV? You have to answer these three questions. Is it a one-tail or two-tail test? Is it directional or non-directional? What is the size of alpha? Until further notice, 5%. What is my degrees of freedom? This comes from the test. It's the formula that's built into the test. It's in the denominator of the first part. It's the total sample size minus the number of groups, right? Step six, compare them. Put the OV next to the CV. Ask yourself, what's happening? If the OV is more extreme than the CV, if the OV is bigger than the CV, right? What are you gonna do? The results are significant, so you're gonna reject the null hypothesis, right? If the answer to step six is yes, you reject the null hypothesis. But what if the answer is no? What if the obtained value is not more extreme, right? What do you do then? Then you're going to keep believing the null hypothesis. You're gonna retain the null hypothesis, right? you're gonna to continue to believe there's no difference among the groups. So let me paraphrase that. When the OV is more extreme than the CV, the results are significant. Your answer gets the asterisk, it gets the star. What's your decision? You reject the null hypothesis. But if this doesn't happen, if the OV is not more extreme than the CV, so if like less, or the answer is closer to zero, the absolute value of the OV is less than the critical value. What is your decision? You're gonna retain the null hypothesis. Why? Because your answer was non-significant, NS. It gets an NS. All right, so what's next? Well, it's time for you to practice. So. For the next three slides, I want you to solve this problem. So you can pause the video after this, and when you're ready to resume, I'll go over how to find the answer. This is your chance to practice. So, I want you to, I want you to find the mean and the variance for both groups. I want you to write the formula for T. I want you to get the OV. 
I want you to fill out your table for critical values, right? We're looking for any kind of difference. We're looking for any kind of difference. So which test are you gonna use, right? What are you gonna use for alpha? What are the answers to these three questions? Fill out the critical value table. That's that four square one. And then this is what I want you to do. When your answer is significant for all four squares, if your answer is significant, it gets a star. If your answer is non-significant, it gets NS. And then circle which square is the actual critical value that you're using to determine if there's a difference between these two groups. Good luck. <laughs>